Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to go over an email sent to me by Matthew Pruitt, a miracle that happened to him. I haven't read this yet, but I made sure that, you know, he didn't want to remain anonymous or anything like that. Uh, feel free to send in your miracle stories. Make sure that they're not too sacred or shouldn't be, you know, shared in public like this. But uh, inspirational things, you know, just use your best judgment. Uh, now, this email is back from December 7th. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Um, it, it just, it, it's taking me time to get through these. I'm going to try and pick up the pace, at least like maybe do one at least every Saturday so that you have a spiritual thought for uh, going into Sunday, or perhaps you'll watch this on Sunday. I don't know. But uh, if you've sent me an email, don't worry, I'm getting to it. It's just there's a lot of people that have sent in emails, so I'm working my way through it. Uh, but don't let that stop you from sending in your story. Really quick, here's the update on the Book of Mormon sharing challenge, or the hashtag Flood the Earth challenge. 5,349 copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared. So we're getting pretty close, uh, I would say, to the 5,500 mark, which is going to be the next time that I do a highlight right here under this uh, column. Every 500, we'll do a little highlight to kind of, uh, well, highlight our progress so, and I'm hoping that this can get up to 10,000. And I think it could, it could go way further. I don't know. Uh, I'm really curious to see how far this will go. And then we have 520 people that have said that they're participating in the challenge. So please make that number go up. Uh, you know, we don't have all the time in the world before the second coming. And there's a lot of missionary work that needs to be done. And the missionaries can't do it all themselves. So this is a great way to incentivize you to... Uh, to do missionary work and to share the Book of Mormon. Uh, when you share a Book of Mormon, let me know, put it in the comments, or send it in an email. Make sure that it's really short and to the point, and include hashtag flood so I can easily find it. Thank you. All right, so to the email. He says, a few weeks ago, I read Joel, and sorry, I can't, I can't uh, zoom in anymore. This is going to be how big I can do it. Um, a few weeks ago, I read Joel... 228 which states i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions i've never been one to have many dreams but a few years ago i began having dreams more frequently which i knew were from god uh, when i had such a dream i would record it on my phone's note notes app i went back through this notes app and searched for keyword dreams and was astounded by how many I've recorded and how they uh, all started right after President Nelson came, became president of the church. Uh, that certainly is interesting. I, You know, Matt and everybody else, I feel like a lot of people, I've heard from a number of people now, that there was like a, a kind of like a sudden increase in um, spirituality, coming back to church, in your case, having dreams, around the time that President Nelson became president of the church. I, I don't think that's coincidence, and um, and I do believe that there probably was a bump in uh, spirituality, because we're getting to that point, that like transition time, I assume, uh, when we transition from before the second coming to after the second coming, into this new millennial world. So I, I, it makes all the all the sense of the world to me that Heavenly Father would be uh, preparing people in various ways, preparing families, friends, uh, individuals in a number of different ways. So it makes sense to me. Uh, by the way, I don't know if anyone has looked into lucid dreaming. That's where you realize that you're dreaming as you're dreaming and you... Uh, can get it to the point where you actually have full control of what you do in the dream, or you could be semi lucid and have some control. Uh, this is something that I kind of tried to do before my mission. And uh, a big part of that is recording your dreams and becoming very, very familiar with your dreams. The recurring themes that pop up uh, called dream signs. And as you do that, it actually, uh, it helps to induce, lucid dreams uh there's other things that you do as well I, I i haven't picked it up since my mission but as i was trying to do it uh i started having some really interesting dreams and i've i've been thinking for a while you know i, I don't have a set schedule this is what i do for a job now this and then my graphic design so i'm self-employed 
I get up when I want to, essentially, although I try and get up at a good time. And uh, it's easy for me to write down my dreams. And I feel like that's something that I should do again. Uh, maybe I can encourage some of you to do that as well for spiritual reasons. And then on top of that, if you get to the point where you start becoming lucid in your dreams, I, maybe you can have more spiritual experiences that way. Uh, there was an interesting thing that Richard G. Scott said about uh, one of the best times to receive revelation. And it's in that state where you're in between being awake and being asleep. In fact, I'm going to see if I can find that really quick. Okay, here it is. I found it. <clears throat> I And I think I've shared this on the channel before. But when I first heard this, this was like one of the most uh, strange, unique things I think that's ever been said in General Conference. Uh, so Elder Richard G. Scott, he was in the Quorum of the Twelve. And uh, I, I got to shake hands with him when he came to the Provo MTC as I was there going on my mission, uh, preparing to go out to the field. And uh, he was really big into personal revelation, really big. And he made this really curious statement that just burned itself into my brain. Uh, this is during General Conference, April, April 2012. He says, uh, revelation can also be given in a dream when there is an almost imperceptible transition from sleep to wakefulness. If you strive to capture the content immediately, you can record great detail, but otherwise it fades rapidly. Inspired communication in the night is generally accompanied by a sacred feeling of the entire spirit experience. The Lord uses individuals uh, for whom we have great respect to teach us truths in a dream because we trust them and will listen to their counsel. It is the Lord doing the teaching through the Holy Ghost. However, he may in a dream make it both easier to understand and more likely to touch our hearts by teaching us through someone we love and respect. Um, it would be worth it for you if you're interested in this, uh, what I just read, to read the entire thing. I think in this same talk, he talks about taking care of your body. Yeah, right here. Look, on the other hand, uh, spiritual, spiritual communication can be enhanced by good health practices. Have you ever thought about that? Being healthy and that increasing your or enhancing your spiritual communication? That's what he's saying. He says exercise, reasonable amounts of sleep. And good eating habits exercise our capacity to receive and understand revelation. Which is interesting because that kind of goes along. And sorry, Matt, I'm getting back to your email, but I just want to bring a couple things up. That kind of goes along in one way uh, with the word of wisdom. Uh, you'll remember that there's specific blessings associated with the word of wisdom. Let's see, here we go. Section 89. Okay, so at the end, it says, among other things, uh, this is one of the blessings that you'll have for obeying the word of wisdom. Uh, and she'll find wisdom and great treasures of knowledge, even hidden treasures. So <clears throat> some people have made the point that when you obey the word of wisdom, that makes it so that you're worthy to go to the temple. And in the temple, you certainly receive great treasures of knowledge and hidden treasures. But it could possibly be broader than that. And uh, I'm basing that off of what Richard G. Scott is saying right here about exercise, reasonable amounts of sleep, good eating habits, right? The word of wisdom, taking care of your body. So um, maybe maybe look into it. Look into lucid dreaming if, if you think that's something that you could do. Uh, you, I'm not promising anything. I, I haven't had it myself, but you may have some incredible experiences if you master that skill. And I will say one thing. Um, as I started to learn how to lucid dream, like I, I never got fully lucid. I, I always got like kind of semi-lucid. But I started having some like pretty like vivid dreams. And I'm talking about like color and stuff like that. I remember one in particular. I was walking down a street in my old neighborhood and the sun was riding, rising and I looked at it and the colors were just vibrant more so than I, I don't even know how it was possible because I was dreaming and I hadn't experienced anything like that up till that point. So 
I think we have a lot of capabilities, and uh, this is something that's good and okay and safe to uh, dive into. Just don't become a crazy person and start doing, you know, daybell type things. Um, but anyway, just I would follow Richard G. Scott's counsel, Elder Richard G. Scott. Okay, so dreams. Here we go. Okay, so uh, he would record it. Good, good. We should do that with all personal revelation, and that's something I I wish I did better at. Um, okay, on their own, that increase of dreams, many of which take place in sacred circumstances within the temple, is a miracle and a partial fulfillment of Joel's prophecy. But even greater miracles have come to my life stemming from the things I have been taught and led to do in those dreams. In 2018 and 2019, I remember feeling out of shape. I could hardly walk up uh, a, sl a slight hill for about 50 feet without huffing and puffing. Oh, sounds like me right now. Uh, one of my first dreams in this sequence of dreams, much of which I consider too sacred to share. Good, good uh, discretion there. Uh, literally saved my life. Essentially, it began with me witnessing two men being taken through the veil and each being told, well done, my good and faithful servant, and ended with me and others sent out from the temple into an unfamiliar world to run through the streets. When I awoke from this dream, I, ro I arose wide awake uh, before my alarm, and I received the overwhelming impression and prompting, get up and run, or you will die. <laughs> Sounds like my sergeant um, in the army. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to make light of your experience, but uh, I feel like I may have heard that a few times, a few times uh, when I was in the army. Um, okay, yeah, so I am... I. I received the overwhelming impression in prompting, get up and run or you will die. <laughs> Sorry. Um, although not an audible voice, it was, a it was as clear as a voice from God. The dream and the impression motivated me enough that I began to run three to five times a week for at least six months and usually a couple times a week through the end of 2021. I went from not being able to walk 50 feet to being able to run three miles without stopping. Uh, so come 2021, I was in the best shape I've, uh, I've ever, I've ever been in. Okay. That's what it's ever been in. I remember thinking in March and April, 2020, that perhaps COVID was the reason I was prompted to get in shape, but almost two years passed. And in November, 2021, I started feeling like I had avoided COVID altogether. Well, come December 2021, my entire family got COVID. For whatever reason, it ravaged me. Uh, I had 105 fever for about a week uh, before getting antibody injections, which helped end the fever. During this time where my entire family had COVID, I witnessed the ministering of heavenly angels in ways too sacred to write, which attended to my daughter when I was too weak and too sick to get out of bed. Even after the fever ended... I had to go to the hospital for a pneumonia, oh gosh, when it rains it pours, which was causing my oxygen levels to drop dangerously. Toward the new year, I was starting to feel like my pneumonia was getting better when suddenly I felt like I was having a heart attack. Uh, while it wasn't actually a heart attack, I was admitted to the hospital for several days with uh, myocard myocarditis, I think that's what that is, which is inflammation and damage to the heart. Oh, gosh. Uh, it was some of the worst pain I've ever experienced. I know that if I, if I had not listened to my dream in 2019 and began running to strengthen my lungs and my heart, I would not be alive today. Uh, the, spirit has also t the Spirit has told me so. Although I am still dealing with the aftermath of this, this a year later, the Lord has given me extra time to be with my family, and during that time... Has blessed, has blessed us tremendously. I still don't know exactly what the Lord has in store for me and whether I will be blessed to be here for the second coming, but I'm grateful for the year he's given me and whatever time I have left ahead. Because without acting on the revelation to begin running, my appointed time would have been much sooner. Well, good job, Matt. Um, I'll tell you one thing. Out of, out of all exercises, except for maybe burpees, 
Uh, I hate running. I hate it. I hate running. And um, it's hard to do. Now, I, I don't know. I don't know if you if you like running or not, but good job doing that. I know that running is a really good thing to do when it comes to uh, like weight loss and just, yeah, like you said, cardio and things like that. It's one of the better exercises you can do. Um, I, I think about like, I think about my dad because he passed away in 2015, uh, when I was in the army and it, it's really interesting because I came home a bit early from my, uh, deployment. Um, I was having like a, an issue. I had to get medevac back. It was non-combat related, but it, I was like really, really bummed out because I wanted to finish the deployment. And I came home and I, I joined the rest of the rear detachment, the rear D, and it was really lame. And um, but what happened was, if I hadn't come home, I wouldn't have been able to take my emergency. Well, maybe I maybe they would have let me go from Afghanistan. I don't know. I've heard of that before, but it probably would have been more difficult to get the emergency leave to go home to my dad's funeral. And uh, the thing with him is that he was always, you know, as far as long as I remember. Um, in fact, I don't think I've ever really seen any pictures of him thin, except for maybe a little bit on his mission. Um, even then, he was kind of a little bit stocky. But, you know, I, I saw him in his life. He did try a couple times to do exercise. Like, he bought an exercise bike. We had a treadmill. Um one time I remember going with him to do like a walk on a, down the Jordan river parkway in, you know, the Salt Lake Valley in Murray. Um, but he didn't really stick with it. And, and he did have pretty bad, a pretty bad diet, I would say. Um, and it, and it always like scared me. It, it always scared me because he had diabetes. My grandpa had diabetes, but my, my grandpa was not overweight, but they both had diabetes, and uh, I've been desperately trying to not get it myself. And uh, after I got out of the army, I gained like a thousand pounds, and I'm trying to get rid of that as we speak. Thankfully, we have a gym here in town because I don't I don't like working out outside where it's like quiet and I hate the sound of shoes as you're running. And then on top of that, if you're running running in a group, a bunch of shoes hitting the pavement, I, I hate, hate that noise. Um, I much prefer to do it inside <clears throat> in a gym and, uh, that's what we're doing right now. But, um, it's interesting. Cause like, I wonder, you know, did my dad have some kind of similar, uh, warning, whether it was a dream or just a prompting or something like that. And I'm not going to judge him. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, for everybody else out there that that's still alive if you're watching this and you're not alive please tell me how you're doing that but uh if you're still alive you should probably make this a priority frankly um it's so easy to think that like you're doing good just by you know living the gospel uh, as far as like how do you, how you treat others studying the scriptures going to the temple gathering scattered israel service and stuff like that but another big part of it is your body, because your body is a temple. And we should be taking care of our temples. Uh, like we've talked about before, the, the ancient temples, and I, and I would argue the modern day temples are patterned after the human body. Um, I'm not going to go through all that right now, but in fact, I'm thinking of doing a video in the future because, um, let's see drawing human figure head proportions or how do you, I don't know how you spell it. Um, I don't know a whole lot about drawing, but I've learned a little bit. And um, my daughter, she's actually really good. Uh, she just, she's really good. But <clears throat> if you look at this here, I guess like one way, like as you're trying to figure out how long everything is supposed to be arms and, you know, knees and torso and all those things, you base it off of the human head right here. And I wanted to like compare this to Solomon's temple because 
and we've talked about this, how the Holy of Holies seems to correspond with uh, either the brain area right here or, or potentially the whole head. I'm not sure. Um, and then as you go down, you know, I talked to Rabbi Gerfine about how you have the three input or OK, you have six. No, sorry. <laughs> Seven. You have seven inputs where uh, you, with which you sense things. You have your two ears, right? You have the two eyes, so that's four. And then he counted, even though it's one nose, he counted the two nostrils, okay? So you have six total, and then the mouth uh, makes the seventh. And he was saying that in Jewish tradition, they looked at the menorah in this way. And that's why the menorah is in um, the sanctuary, Right. We've talked about the Ark of the Covenant, how it's like the brain. It would kind of be the um, the analogy for the brain. And what you're supposed to have in your mind is the law, you know, the Ten Commandments. And remember the things that God has done for you. So in, in that case, the manna with which the Lord um, helped Israel survive in the wilderness and took care of them and, and all that stuff, right? So I'm going to do a video sometime in the future and see if this kind of like matches up with the temple when we're talking about head proportions, like head to the rest of the body. I feel like I feel like that's probably going to be the case. I don't know, though. Anyway, all I'm saying is we need to take care of this. Regardless, we've been told that our bodies are temples. We need to take care of them. And wouldn't it make sense that your temple would probably receive more revelation it would be more holy it'd be a, a much purer place if you were properly taking care of it right instead of a temple that has potato chips falling out the coming out the front door and um you know fat <laughs> temple <laughs> and obviously there's things that you can't control but if you're doing everything you can to maintain your temple I think you're much more likely to have the spirit uh, visit you in that temple, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Matthew Pruitt. I'm so glad that you're still alive and with us and just hang in there. Continue exercising, taking care of yourself. And this definitely was a miracle. In just a small and simple way, just through dreams, you know, it's it saved your life. You know, presumably. It, it almost certainly did. It almost certainly saved your life. So, yeah. Alright. Well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.